So I'm going to take some of the shorter software development questions, some of the one or two markers um, that are standalone, and then we'll come back and do the extended questions later. So question two, following code is used to input and display points in the game. So remember, this is SQA reference language, this is not Python, but you're not expected to write it. You just have to read it. So receive team name from keyboard. So effectively what's happening there is input, and then input the total points, and then it's displaying the output. We have to write this line seven. It says using a programming language of your choice, write line seven of the program. So we're writing the one that will display the output, and it's to look like this. So we've got team name and total points are our variables. I'm just going to get a highlighter here. So we've got team name and total points. If I'm going to write this code, it's not literally going to say Scotland scored 27 points. We're going to say team name scored total points, points. So team name is Scotland, total points is 27. So I've got my print statement already there for Python. Um, I'll start off, it's going to start with team name. Oops, let's start the highlighter. And then scored. Now scored is going to go in speech marks because that's not a variable. So that's literally the word scored. Plus, and instead of 27 it will be total points. Now I need that as a string, so str total points not finish it because it's then got the word points afterwards it's not included up there, it's almost a wee bit of a trick question so plus the word points at the end and then close my bracket so I've got a mark there for using the variable names and I've got a mark for these literal bits that are in speech marks that would be printed the same every time. Question 3 says, a club requires a programme to calculate how much each member needs to pay in membership fees. Complete the table below to show which type of variable should be used. So this is a really easy question, especially because they've already done the real number for us. Um, so you're not having to remember whether that's a real number or a Python float. So we've got, here's membership 6, so we should know 6 is an integer. The member name, the example is Jones, so that's a string. Nice and easy. And then I'm going to do the first part of question 4, and I'm going to split this video into two. So a train company is designing a program to handle passenger complaints, and part of the design is shown below. To state which type of loop is used in the design. So we've got a couple of conditions going on here and I'm going to switch back to the highlighter again. So I've got a condition going on here and I've got a condition going on here. And it's important that we can recognise right, which one of these is a loop. Because you've got a similar sort of question where sometimes it will say something like it is a conditional loop. What's the condition in the loop? So this thing here, right? Program starts, and effectively this is an if, right? It's going one way or the other. Is the complaint due to a delay? So if it's no, then they're going to review the complaint, display the outcome. Is the passenger satisfied? So we've got another decision being made, but this one it's either going on forwards or it's going back, and it would repeat again. So they would end up going back and going back and going back, and they might have to do this several times. So that is the loop. Now, if this was a fixed loop, it might be something like repeat 10 times, um, ask if the passenger's satisfied, but that doesn't really make any sense. So instead, it's a conditional loop. Because you don't know in advance how many times that the passenger isn't going to be satisfied with the complaint, so you just need to keep repeating until it's right. Um, now, I'm going to stop this here and then do the other part of this question separately.